Hello and welcome back again to Cody's Radio Workshop. On the bench we have a Roberts Revival. This is the model R250. A very popular little set. And this has come to me not working. So we're going to take it apart in stages. And you should be able to see each of those stages as I do it. And this may help you to diagnose and repair your own radio. So we need to take the radio out of the case. There's one screw on this side. Behind the handle. Pop that on one side. One of my favourite sayings that. That's a really big side. And take out the other one. And pop that on one side. And open up the back, lay it on its front. Underneath the set, on the bottom, there is a screw which holds the aerial in. That needs to be removed. Then we can withdraw the aerial completely. Guess where that's going. And on either side, here and here, there is a board which holds the radio in. Now on one side there is usually a screw and on this occasion it's on this side. But equally it could be on the other side and that's just to hold the board in to stop the radio being damaged when you remove it. Short screw on one side. Then with these boards you've got a little hole here and a little hole here. If you pop in a suitable implement and just lever it away from the side lift up and it will withdraw. Exactly the same on the other side. Little hole at the bottom, a little cut out there. Just lever it away from the side, lift up and remove it. There's the DC cowling where you plug in your external power supply which should be, if at all possible, a genuine Roberts power supply with centre pin negative, not centre pin positive, as has probably happened in this radio's previous life. And then we can lift up the radio to the extent of the speaker wires and just pull to remove either the speaker in this case. I'm going to use, pop that down, hold the speaker in place and try and lift up The speaker connectors, which isn't happening. Mm -hmm. That's broke that one. And that's off now. We can pop the case on one side because we won't need that for a little while. What we're going to concentrate on here is the audio IC, which on the board, on the reverse side of the board, if I zoom you down and keep that in there, you can see, or you will be able to see, there are one, two, three, four there, and one, two, three, four there. That is the audio IC, and if I flick that over, be able to see there, there is the audio IC. But zooming in a little further, if it will allow, you can see here where this 1000 microfarad capacitor is domed on the top and that has vented, as has the 470 microfarad capacitor. So this may be a case of just changing these two capacitors and then the radio will work. I have a very sneaking suspicion that it will also have damaged this audio IC, which is a TDA7231, so that will probably have to come out as well. But the path of least resistance is to change these two capacitors first and see if that restores operation.
do is just pop something there just to stop it sliding away from me on the bench. I usually put these into a PCB holder but for the purposes of the video that wouldn't uh, show you what it is that I'm doing. So then remove the capacitor, put the other one which is the 1000 microfarad cap there it is, you can see that that's domed and, and vented so that is no good so I will replace those with their equivalents we'll pop the 1000 in first And the 470 there. Turn it over and we will solder those back on. I just bend the legs just to stop the caps dropping back out. On these boards, I like to put a little bit of flux on so that I'm not heating the, the tracks up too much as I apply the solder. And that is that done. Grab some snips and cut off legs on the reverse TDA7231 and that has actually is that some physical damage on the top but that will have to come out and a replacement popped in so I'm now removing the IC Turn that back over. Just trying to lever this chip up. As you see, I can I use a dental pick for this because you can get into the places that other tools can't reach. And what I am going to do is put in a dip 8 socket so that if this sort of problem happens in the future it will be much easier for somebody to remove the faulty chip and insert the dip socket like so. Then we can solder that dip socket back in. Like I say on these boards, a little bit of flux. I don't always use the flux, but on these boards it is prudent. Helps the solder to flow much better. I do have super shaky hands today too. And then we need to pop the IC into the socket. We just need to press those legs just a little to get the right pitch for the socket 
and that's it, just clipped in. Right, now we connect the external speaker. Like so. Switched off. Attach the battery and we fixed the radio. Lastly, now that that's working, we just pop it all back in the case again. Need some switch cleaner in the medium wave switch. It feels very much like a play at times, doesn't it? And long wave. <laughs> Only one real station I can pick up here on long wave. Radio 4. And that's it. All done. Nice, easy, straightforward. It's the IC and the two capacitors, which were the 1000 microfarad and the 470 microfarad and for a little bit of fun, a little bit of capacitor bingo at the end let's have a look and see what these capacitors actually read so I'll turn on the peak and connect both of the legs up that's 471 and that should be a thousand so that's lost half and the 470 that's lost a little bit, it's 435 but that would still actually have worked in the set but because it's dropped it's a usual suspect and it had to go so there we go, there's the IC the two campasters and the radio. All done, working, sorted. Thanks very much for watching, like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one which will be the follow-up or one of the follow-ups to the R200 that I did in my previous video. Catch you next time.